Sorry, welcome. No, yeah, welcome. welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for having me again. We've got all the goodies. Yep. How do we figure out what panel we need and what ampage, what, what wattage? Yeah, amps, watts, volts. What to what? <laughs> yeah. No, excellent. So it's a really good question, and, and we get asked that you know, quite a few times every day on the tech line. Um, look, it's a bit of a, a combination of, a, of your battery, your solar panel, and of course, um, in-vehicle battery chargers now, which have solar regulators in them. So to, um, what we do have at Red Arc, we've made it really simple. We've added a website and a calculator on our website. Oh, okay. So... So how does that work? Yeah, so you can actually go on our calculator and just click on the fridge or click on your sleep apnea machine or your light and then actually tell us how many um, batteries you're looking at having or if yeah. you're not sure, you can just hit, un, you know, I'm not sure and then we'll actually calculate that and give you a result showing the panels that are best suited for a caravan or camper trailer or even just your full drive or, or normal car. Wow. All right. Yeah, it's that easy. Okay, so, all right, well, is there a, a sort of a guide you can give us now, a bit of an yeah. inside info on, um, okay, I've got a compressor fridge, yep. right, which pretty good, it's not a yep. three-way, I've got a 240 and a compressor, a 12-volt fridge, yeah. so I've got that, I'm not sure of the size, 120 litre, yeah. I think, um, I've only just got this van, um, and I want to I wanna run that now, I've got a 140-watt panel, Yep. is that going to work? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so with, with the fridge, yeah, your most common system you know, we see is a compressor fridge and some camp lights, and you want to go away for the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the fridge will have a, a wattage, and normally you can convert that with your battery, and you, you know how many amps that fridge is going to use. Um, roughly, we like to talk about like per hour or per day, right. um, and we can, we can get that information normally off of our lights and off of our fridge. And then we have to look at what battery size we have. And you, it's a pretty simple calculation. You can look at how many hours a day you're going to run that product. And then um, our battery will come in an amp hour figure. So mm -hmm. a, a normal battery we, we see out there is 80 amp hour, 100 amp hour. Um, some caravans you might have two batteries. Yeah, I've got yeah. two 120s. Yeah, and, and look, it's a good rule of thumb when you know your battery capacity. Um, that's your battery's total usage, almost like a, having an esky full of water. Right. And um, you don't want to use all of that. You want to make sure that you use half of that battery battery capacity, and that means your battery will last a, a, a longer time frame. So, so if a battery gets below a certain level, is it um, ruined? I was going to use another no. word then. Is it ruined? No, definitely not, <laughs> definitely not ruined, but you want to keep the battery recharged and right. keep it full to make it last its maximum lifespan, which you know, or, or a battery should give us a minimum of three years, you know, and, and if looked after, charged right, the right temperature, you can sometimes push that to you know, five to 10 years. Okay, so I've got the 220 amp hour batteries, that's yeah. fine, and I've got the one 140 uh, watt system up the top. Yep. Um, sun's not gonna be there, and that's permanently mounted on my van. Yeah, no, look. Is that, is that gonna work, or do I have to, do I have to jack it up or get a portable one? Do I have to get yeah, absolutely? Yeah, look, extra? Um, it's, it's very important the angle of the sun for the panel. So yeah, the most common caravan setup is to put the panel flat on the roof. Now, um, flat on the roof, the actual sun in Adelaide here rises to about 35 degrees. So we're hitting that panel at, at 35 degrees, and a lot of the sun is reflected off that glass. So um, you know, in percentage, actually, it can be sometimes 50% to 20% lost of power. So your 140 watt panel, uh, you know, could be operating at about 100 watts. Okay. So it's a little bit of a loss to to do that. Um, the portable panels, where you put them up on an angle, yeah. is is a great idea. Um, you know, I've got. My two little kids, and if we go camping, you can train them to every Man, hour maneuver the panel. Your kids aren't little, they're sitting here, they're, they're huge. They're little, they, were, they used to be little. Yeah, and, and that's a good idea, guys, to so keep moving those panels every hour to track that sun and yeah. keep it at the right angle. And um, at Red Arc, we've got products that can actually tell you how your solar panels are performing, and yeah. then you can actually keep an eye on that and then make sure you've got the best performance. So is there a, a, d a device, that yeah. was sort of my next question, a device to say, right, oh, this is what it's charging app? Absolutely, yeah. So a solar panel is a, um, almost like a battery that's powered by the sun. And that solar panel can put out about anywhere from 18 to, say, 25 volts. Mm -hmm. Now, um, our battery in our car, you probably will see our little voltmeters, they sit on around 14 volts. While they're charging. Th that's right. And yeah. then when the battery's just sitting there not charging, they're, they're normally about 12 volts. 12, that's, the, that's yeah. the optimum? That That's right. So we can't just hook our solar panel at 20 volts straight into our battery. Uh, we need to control that voltage, and we do that with a solar regulator, mm -hmm. which you can just see in the image uh, down the bottom there. It's just a little device. You connect your solar 
solar panel to it, connect it to your battery, and then that will actually charge our battery. So take that 20 volts and then keep our battery charged safely. And then when the battery's charged, they go to a float stage so we don't overcharge the battery. So you can go go for a hike or go for a drive, leave the solar panel at the campsite and then come Chained back. up. Charging, up, by the way. Yeah, and then <laughs> come back and its um, battery could be full and it's just trickle charging. Okay. Yep. Um, just on regulators, for instance, yeah. if we get a, a solar panel that's a standalone one, yes. do they have their own regulator in them, or the you know, or can you just connect that to your car or your caravan directly to the battery? Yeah, no, look, um, solar panels are always made um, without a regulator. There right. are companies that you will find a regulator glued to the back of the panel. Yeah. Um, at Red Arc, we keep that regulator separate. The reason why you don't want to put your regulator on the back of the panel is we've got all these beautiful sun in our country and it does heat up and our electronics do actually have temperature limits. Uh, we've got products that have a limit from 50 degrees and we have other battery charger equipment that have an 80 degree temperature limit. So with, with Red Arc, we definitely recommend the regulator can go in the shade, in the caravan or camper or in the vehicle, out of the sun, in somewhere in a cooler environment where the battery is mm -hmm. and um, not on the back of the panel. So I visited Red Arc and had a look through the, through the facility. It's a, an amazing setup, folks. The technology, there's people there designing things all the time. It's amazing. Now, the, the sort of, um, is it crystals or the what's, yeah. the, what's the term here, Matt? Yeah, the we the have, things that are actually making the panels. That's right. We have um, monocrystalline yeah. and polycrystalline and the new amorphous uh, silicon here. Right, eh? So um, it's exactly what it sounds. It, it is a crystal and mm -hmm. um, poly just means multi-crystal and mono means single crystal. And the, the, you can actually see the difference of the panels. Right. But because they're a crystal, they're very fragile. So you will find crystalline panels of normally covered by glass or a, or a plastic, and, and that's purely for its protection from getting cracked. So right. um, the, amor the amorphous you can see here, it's almost like a spray-painted solar material. Yeah, that, and this is so thin. Yeah, they can, they can paint that onto plastic or aluminium, and it's um, a very thin layer, so it can be very flexible. Great, so for, yeah, great for camping and great for driving. Camping. I was just going to say, where, where is this best used? Oh, absolutely, yeah. At the campsite, just out, out on the ground in the sun. Keep, yep. the, keep the vehicle, caravan, camper in the shade. And um, it doesn't matter if the surface is a, a bit un, unlevel Uneven. or flat. Yeah, yep. it doesn't have to be completely flat. They, that'll sit and layer itself you know, nicely onto the ground. I've seen them uh, pictures of them on the front of bonnets of cars. Yeah. Is that okay? Absolutely, yeah. So they, you were talking about them getting hot. Yeah, that's right. This product here is a very, um, very unique for us. So during the development of it, one of the conditions was that it operates at a high temperature. So that, that has a 85 degree operating temperature limit. So, so what's the wattage? That one there is Obviously. 108. Right. Yeah, and 108 is roughly twice our fridge wattage. So while the sun's out and the fridge is running, this can be powering the battery, charging the battery, which is running the fridge, but putting almost exactly what the fridge is using back into the battery. So we're, we're positive charging. How do I care for these? Do I wash them? Do I... Sorry, me. I'll yeah, be, no, you know, no. I, I do that. I clean. But, you know, I'd, I'd go, oh, looking a bit dirty, I'll get a bit of a spray thing and go yeah. spray, spray, spray. No, look, no? it's um, no, definitely, definitely not. So with all, all solar panels, glass or flexible um, fabric panels, um, what we would really recommend is uh, wait till they cool down. Mm -hmm. And you just need something as basic as water. Uh, with the glass panels, with the amorphous panel there, when they're cool, you can actually just hose off any excess dust or mud and then we can actually just um, chamois them dry and then give them a clean with a soft microfiber cloth. And, oh, the yep. same would apply, obviously, for the ones on your, on your van. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, you get up, get up, get a ladder, whatever. You, you have to clean those off every now and then. Yeah, look, it's really important to keep them as clean as possible because any, um, any dust or any dirt is actually just interfering with the sun penetrating the cell, and th that means wasted power. Um, we already know that we've got a little bit of wasted power because we might have the panel flat, mm -hmm. so you want to make sure that it's nice and clean and you know, getting maximum absorption in, as much as you can. Yeah. What about the length of wire and the, the size of the wire from yeah. a portable unit to, to the battery area. Is really that affect, important. Does that affect the charge? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Because the, the solar panel, back, back to volts, we talked about uh, 20 volts at the solar panel, and um, then we have to make that power travel through the wire. It could be five metres, seven and a half, ten metres of cable. And uh, just unfortunately, the rule of electronics and electricity is uh, even with very thick cable, we're going to lose power every metre of cable. So that's called voltage drop. 
And it's one of the benefits solar panels. You know, they have a 20 volt output, and we're charging our battery at 14 volt. So we do have the ability to lose a little bit, but you want to minimise that. And to do that, it's thicker cable or shorter cable. So we really spoke, important. We spoke before about you know the sun and directing it towards the sun. Yeah. What about a cloudy day? Is it worth still putting them out? I mean, we still go camping when it's yeah, when it's winter. So oh, look, hopefully it's, they're going to work. Yeah. Look, absolutely worth putting them out, but um, don't let anyone fool you. Look, they are a solar panel. They do rely on direct sunlight, and look, unfortunately, the performance can reduce um, anywhere up to 50, 80 percent in a really overcast day. So. Wow. Yeah, we do. Um, the only way to really counteract that is to have a, additional panels if you. Um, um, you know, looking at a say a 120 watt panel, and you go and have a, an overcast weekend, you, you might be down in your 80 watts range. So one way to benefit, uh, one way to compete with that is to maybe invest in a 150 watt panel, mm -hmm. and then you've got that extra wattage there. So then, if you're unfortunate overcast conditions, you've, you're going to have a little bit more on the day. Can you daisy chain them up? Absolutely right. Yeah. So um, it's called connecting them in parallel. And you can connect um, as many panels as you like. Uh, one thing to consider is every time you hook up a panel in parallel, it's like hooking up batteries together. Uh, your power increases. Mm -hmm. And of course, your solar regulator, um, they have a power limit. So we do need to check what limit our regulator is. So check before yeah. you connect. Absolutely, yeah. Check before you connect. That's it. And oh. you know, we do a, a 10 amp regulator and a 20 amp regulator. Yeah. And th that roughly relates to 120 watt or 240 watts of solar. And then. We have larger models up to 40 amp of regulators, which, which could be um, six, 700 watts of panel on your caravan. Okay. Sorry, what about the areas of Australia? Do different areas have different sun directions? Absolutely. No, look, it, it is really important. Uh, if you're lucky enough to live in, in the north in Darwin, uh, you, your panels could actually almost be flat on the ground during summer because the sun is literally um, you know, right up above us. And then, of course, as you travel south all the way down to Hobart, you're going to get a lot less angle. So um, you know, in Adelaide before, we were saying you know, 35 degrees. In Hobart, you might have to have your panels at about 40 degrees just to get the optimum performance. And it's all about minimising that reflection. So research, and uh, I've just swapped mics here. Yeah. Um, research is fine. As I said, I've, I've rung Matt a couple of times on various things just to find out, and, and it's very easy to get through to these guys to ask the question. You don't get put on hold, no. on hold, on hold, on hold too often. Too often, I'll say, you're sweating and busy. So uh, back again, any questions? Yep, yes, sir, hang on, I'll bring this down. Uh, we purchased a motorhome. And once we got it home, we actually found we had a solar panel on the top. Fantastic. How can we tell what the difference is between the different types? Um, there is no real... Information. Anything to indicate what size it is or anything like oh. that. Is there any way of yeah. finding that out? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, uh, most solar panels on the back of them will have a label. If it is mounted um, somewhere where you can't see behind it, um, yeah, it's very difficult. Sometimes the old iPhone underneath and take a photo can give you the information you need. But look, um, the easiest way, if you can find where that solar panel connects, you can actually, in good sunlight, measure the voltage. And then if your multimeter has the ability to go to amps, um, you change it over to the maximum scale. And you can actually um, short your solar panel through your multimeter. And that'll give you the amps, how many. And amps is just the electricity, how much flow of electricity. If you know the amps and you know the volts, you can times them together. And that'll give you the wattage. And yeah, so um, telling the difference between the two, when you look at a solar panel, this is what we call a, a monocrystalline panel, and this cell is one cell, one crystal. A polycrystalline is multiple crystals. It looks like it's fractured, and um, it's a difference in how they make them. One, one's grown, and one is um, like a, a cooler, lot, a liquid cooling process, a lot faster manufacturing, and during that, the polycrystallines um, fracture, and that's how you can see all the different crystal boundaries. And they're clearly distinctive between the two. We, unfortunately, we don't have a polycrystalline panel in our range, so I don't have an image up here today. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions, folks? Um, what's the difference in performance between the mono and the poly? Yeah, no, very good question. So, uh, uh, probably look a few years ago, it was actually only a couple of percent difference. Um, you know, monocrystalline being a single crystal, they actually have a slightly better efficiency because the electricity gets caught in those grain boundaries of crystals in the poly panels, and it can actually take about 1% or 2% off the performance. Um, so our solar panels today are, are roughly around 18 to 19% efficient. So what that means is in about a metre of sunlight, um, the sun can provide us about 1,000 watts of energy per metre. So we only convert about 20%, 19% of that. So um, the difference between a mono and a poly, it, it might only be 1% or 2%, which is not a lot. 
But actually, if you were investing in a big solar farm or some, a big power station, that's when you'd start to get a, a, a big difference in which panel you choose. We, uh, can we use the ones we've got at home and just take them out on the road? Obviously not take them off the roof. Are they the same sort? No, no look, the panels aren't panels. Right. No, no, look, the solar panels for our house, uh, they're actually designed to go directly to our inverters on the wall and into the grid. So they create those solar panels to put out about, when we talk volts again, up around 60 volts, 40 volts. Um, very, very high voltage, very dangerous, and um, designed, yeah, not for battery charging. A lot of the regulators at Red Arc, um, you know, have a 32 volt input limit. Um, so there's not too many products out there that you can actually hook that solar panel into for battery charging. So no, no, there are definitely, we call them on-grid panels, and no, they're not, a, not um, advisable. If you do happen to connect a few of those um, together and you're not sure of the voltage, yeah, look, you can get into very high voltage, dangerous limits. You know, it's um, all red art panels uh, designed for you know, recreational vehicles, caravanning, camping, and our panels are all what we call a 12-volt nominal panel, and the voltages are around 18 to 25 volt. Any other questions? What's the lifespan of a panel? Have they got a... Yeah, no, life? absolutely. No, look, um, the, the cells themselves um, are identical to the house panel cells. It's the way we configure them. So they do have a performance rating uh, and up to, they expect 20 years out of panels before the performance can drop 20% of its original limit. Uh, so with the red art panels um, where we actually when we design them, we increase the aluminium frame. So we have double channeled aluminium frame. So when they're on top of the caravan or the mm. full drive, they, can, they actually are a lot stiffer. They don't flex. And um, where house panels, of course, they're designed to be permanently mounted. Um, the wind doesn't normally get under them. So they're a little bit different design. Um, so on our cabling and everything, we, we have like a two-year warranty. But of course, um, the solar cells are all the same and they have the same performance. So yep. mounting those on the top of the van and, and yeah. all that, do you... I guess with everything, probably a specialised person is always recommended to, to put those things and wire them up as yeah. opposed to having a go yourself. Sometimes you might just wire it incorrectly slightly right. and it could be a problem. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on, on the Red Art website, we have a find and installer. Um, if you go to the calculator, it's actually the end of the calculator. You can just put your postcode in and it will give you the local three installers in your area. And they're definitely trained by people like myself and the other Red Art uh, representatives and then they know our product really well. So, so solar panels only run a certain amount. They're not going to yeah. run your, your hair dryer guys. They're not going to, sorry, not you sir. <laughs> um, they're not going to run your hair dryers. They're not going to. They're not going to. You know, they'll run your coffee machine. No, they won't. They won't run your coffee machine. Uh, a lot of them will be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what are they yeah. made for? Yeah? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so the, the panels are definitely designed to charge the battery. Um, so you can actually have multiple batteries and, of course, run inverters up to 3,000 watts. Um, so you can buy an inverter, which is a 12-volt battery connects to it, and mm -hmm. then it puts out 240 volt to run our appliances. Um, the most popular appliance we get on the tech line is like a sleep apnea machine, but we do get people wanting coffee machines, even the hairdryer, so, yep, absolutely. <laughs> even your hairdryer. But um, yeah, look, yeah. we only have seven hours a day to capture the sunlight on a good day. Oh, okay, yeah. so we think that daylight saving, it's gonna be out there forever, we'll be able to get that sun, no, I think. The, that's The right. optimum area is seven about, hours. About seven hours, because the early mornings and early evenings, you've got that light on the reflection, and yeah. look, unfortunately, you don't want to be out there adjusting the panel all the time. That's when you but send the kids out. That's right. And yeah. but no, look, the power does definitely uh, drop away from the sun. So yeah, look, it's, you always work out um, you've got seven hours a day. And if you know what your panel is producing, you can um, roughly times that by seven and that'll give you your daily power generated from solar. So. Gentleman's got a question up here. Uh, two questions, actually. Two, yeah. Um, cool. First one, the efficient, how, how does the efficiency between the flexible panels and the rigid panels What's the difference? Yeah. That's the first question. And the second question is, just looking around the show today, I noticed that quite a few of the rigid panels have actually got their own regulator. Yes. Does that allow you just simply to plug into your Anderson plug? Yep. Uh yeah, no. That's the two questions. Good questions. Num number one, so we, um, efficiency is, is um, of the amorphous. This is a very thin layer of silicon. So it actually, it's almost like spray painting this onto a, a surface. Um, but the crystal in a crystalline panel is it's maybe 50 times thicker. So the efficiency is a lot better on a crystal panel, uh, but efficiency is counteracted by size. So this 108-watt um, panel is a, is a lot larger 
than a 100 watt solar panel. And, and that's because the efficiency is about half. It's about 9%. Um, and um, that just means we need more solar panel to capture the equivalent amount of light. But also, it's so much lighter yeah. to carry if you're travelling around, you know, in the full right. drive. Yeah. yeah. And so with, um, with regulators, yeah, the, the solar regulator is there definitely to charge the battery at the right voltage and then, of course, be able to go to the float mode and not overcharge it. If you have the regulator on your panel, um, you've got the length of cable that you have to transfer the electricity through. So if you do have a regulator, it's um, great. You can go straight to your Anderson plug if the Anderson plug is connected to a battery. If your Anderson plug is wired into, say, a Red Arc battery management system or a Red Arc in-vehicle battery charger that already has a regulator, you do need to remove the regulator from your panel and bypass that. Otherwise, you're regulating a regulator. And um, yeah, they, it's just um, either will not work or it just minimal power will get through. Matt was here. I'm not sure whether you're here, sir. But he also mentioned the fact that the panels get hot. Yeah. So if you have the, the um, regulator on the panel, it could cause it a bit yeah. of damage. So just be careful of what you do. Yeah. Purchase. A bit like um, the windscreen of your car. If we, you know, when we go out to the car park this afternoon, mm -hmm. um, it, glass is glass and it's about the same temperature. So if you just stick a regulator to the back of that, they do heat up. And there, there are some regulars, regulators out there that shut down at 50 degrees to prevent the electronics getting too hot. And I have definitely been in situations where um, you go to check a solar panel system on a hot day and it's actually not working because the regulator's in a protection mode. So you just um, get the old hairdryer, give it a blow, uh, cool it down, or you know, I've even been there and put it in the old fridge, cool it down, and yep, she's yep. working again. So okay. yeah, got to keep an eye out for that one. Any other questions, folks? Lady down here? I just wanted to know how you got the... Uh the larger soft panels at your 30 degree angle? Yeah, no, good, very good question. So we've got some uh, reinforced eyelets there. And just like your tent, you can actually strap that up, put a bit of tension on it and hang it off an awning, uh, hang it off something you know, just like the ARB stand over here with the ARB awnings. You could put a little clip on there and just pull that out on an angle and then peg that into the ground. Two uh, kids on either side all day. It. Yeah, otherwise... Unless you know where they are. One, one thing you might notice here is this panel is very unique. It has an anti-reflective coating on it and on any angle you can't see any reflection. So the amorphous panel can actually just go flat on the ground or hang vertical and because you're not losing the reflection like the glass panel, uh, they are very efficient. So they will work extremely well just flat on the ground. Yep. Um, my brother gave me a panel which is like your oh. um, solid one up there. Yeah. But his fell over and landed on bitumen. And, oh. it's and he wants the other one back? <laughs> what a mongrel! No, he, he's actually given it to me, the generous soul. Um, <laughs> oh. Was that still going to function, or is that going to? Uh, uh, it's it shattered. Yeah. Yeah. It? yeah. Look, it, it is a it is a safety glass. Um, it does shatter, um, but behind that is um, a glue, and the glue holds the glass there. Look, definitely, if the cell hasn't broken, um, it it could still be working. But unfortunately, you're going to get a lot of um, reflection through those breakage, so the performance could be yeah down to. 20% or 50% of its original value. So yeah, I might as well toss it out, I think. Unfortunately, yeah. Or if no good Towards idea, your like brother. Yeah. yeah. Now look, a good idea for that. If it is still working, you can um, buy a regulator, put it on a shed, and keep a little the kids, um, you know, you know, battery charge, jet ski, boat, bike, if you got anything like that in the shed. So. Thank you. Yep. What a gift. Matt, do you want to have a quick chat about battery control units because these yeah. sort of they go from this to the batteries and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. How do they work? Yeah, no, look, so um, uh, at Red Arc, uh, we do a, a from battery charging through the solar regulator right up to battery chargers that include the solar regulator. But then because the panel is mounted on your car, you've got your car alternator. So you can actually charge from the alternator between battery and battery. And we call that DC-DC charging. And then when the car turns off, the solar panel can come on and continue charging. And and from that, we've got a next generation system which includes a 240 volt charger, ideal for the caravan or, or yeah, camper trailer. Yeah, 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 and that's yeah. a battery management system. So, so uh, OK, I've had two trains of thought from different people. Somebody has told me, yeah, just keep it plugged in all the time. Yep. Um, uh, because it's a smart charger. Absolutely. And another one said, no, unplug it and every month just go out and turn it on for a day, yeah. top it up, and away you go. Yep. What do you recommend? Yeah, look, absolutely. Um, smart chargers are, the, uh, are available now, yep. and they're very safe, very reliable. So the products, when we say smart charger, it's a, a battery charger that from 240 volt or solar um, will 
charge the battery, and they call it multi-stage. So it actually gives the battery a really high performance charge when it first turns on, mm -hmm. and if the battery needs it, your battery could be full. So the charger says, uh, it knows the battery, knows it's full, it'll, it'll shut down and go to a trickle charge, which we call float. So um, yeah, smart chargers are not just a battery charger, they're a battery analyzer, they do know the battery's performance, and they know how to back off and, and go to float mode if needed. Yeah, where an, a, an ordinary charger, which isn't a smart charger, that could actually just continue to charge the battery. It requires you to have a bit of knowledge about batteries and, of course, when the battery's full, disconnect it. Um, not ideal for our caravans or camper trailers because, yeah, we want to store them and leave them plugged into power or leave a solar panel charging and, and just forget it, come out a you know, day before we go on our trip, turn everything on, yeah, yeah. You know, fill the fridge and away we go. No. Battery free, hassle free. No, probably a good idea to, to do that yeah. the week before you go, yeah, I reckon. Yeah. But there you go. Hey, um, what about, uh, I've got two batteries. Yes. When they're wired, yeah. is there any chance that they can turn into 24 volt? Ab yeah, absolutely. Or, or, you know, they have to stay 12 volt for they all do. my appliances. They do. How, how do you make sure, if you have done it yourself, which I haven't, yep. how do you make sure that they are wired correctly? Yeah, no, look, um, so when we have our battery, we've got our two terminals, a positive and a negative, actually, and we just want to connect the positives together and the negatives together, and that, that's called parallel, and yep. that, that keeps them in 12 volt. And then, of course, if you do connect them in the other configuration, which is positive, negative, positive, negative, um, a bit like when you're putting torches in your, uh, batteries in your torch at home, right. you're putting them in series to get a higher voltage, and, yeah, that's not what we want. So and that's that a turns it into 24, 24 volt, which yeah. could that potentially cause damage to your 12 volts. Absolutely. Volts. It's really important to check your regulator, your battery charger, your battery management system, um, mm -hmm. every, everything, even from like your um, lights to your fridge, they all have a working voltage range. Uh, they might be minimum as 9 and maximum as 16. So mm -hmm. you do need to make sure you understand what you're connecting and what voltages are going in and out of your products. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it always helps, I guess, to learn how a multimeter works. Absolutely. Folks, to find out what, what appliances are char you know, um, yes. pulling so much. Matthew Wright, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, Appreciate Andrew. you coming on board Pleasure again. being here. And, uh, and I'd just like to, if everyone can thank him for coming on. That'd be great. Cheers. Thanks, thank Matt. You.